So let's start with the day of the really big explosion. <laughs> so anyone on the West Coast knows about this story. It happened on one of the piers. I don't know a lot of the details because it happened long ago, like, 2010 but it made big news because as they were set up on a pier it was meant to be the most like expensive fireworks show that the area invested into and it was like a three-day build in order to shoot this show and what happened is they set up they did everything they got it all right all their safety checks went through but they didn't adjust for the weather so one thing in the fireworks industry is we have two firing systems we have a pin board which just looks like a bunch of nails into a cork board or like your like regular like pin board stuff mm -hmm. just looks like nails were hammered into it and we have maker magic and maker magic is a digitally controlled firing system that loops up with music this show was using Maker Magic, and on paper it says that the connectors were put backwards, or they connected it wrong. That is physically impossible unless you have the grip strength of a god. Because for everyone that does PC, you basically have a giant HDMI cable and another HDMI cable, and they're male and female. There's no way that's going in backwards or some shit yeah. due to like the shape of it. So on paper, it says it went in backwards. What happened is they wired everything up. They did their continuity test, which is they made sure everything is wired correctly. Everything is safe. Everything is good to go. And they have to do this two to three times, depending on the size of the show. They did their first one. Everything was good. Well, since they're on the pier and fog cover came in, their firing board got wet. Oh. So their firing board got wet and the wiring system inside and all that got wet with the seawater and everything. And that got wet. So when they go to do their second continuity test, five minutes before the actual show, one guy flipped the board and accidentally set it to fire, which isn't a big thing in the firing industry. It's usually you fire one shell and it's just like, well, I made a mistake. And it just was like, oh, they're starting early or they made a mistake or one just goes off as a test fire. Since the board was wet, he went to do his second continuity test and the whole thing just went off. And this is dangerous for a ton of reasons of they were on a pier. And since you're on a pier, you only have like a size limit due to the amount of force a firework can put out. So when you fire like multiple at once, you're just adding so much force to that pier. And it's a controlled explosive, essentially. And also the amount of heat that's going into this pier can crack the concrete and cause other long-term problems mm. so the second it all went up they had to um back out and go further down the pier and wait for like fire crew to come in and clear them to make sure that it that it was safe for like their vehicles to come down and clean up mm. it was it's a crazy show and on paper it says they just flipped the wires and plugged it in in that's impossible. What actually happened is their board got wet and a guy just made a mistake, turned it to firing, and it was an elements versus electricity. And then we made the sun on Earth. Yeah, if it, you make the sun on Earth, and this is after 9-11, so you don't even have the big fireworks. You only have like four inches. Oh, 9-11 changed the maximum size? 9-11 changed maximum size within residential areas, so... Before 9-11, you were able to get, like, 8-inch to 16-inch shells, depending on where you were. Like, Barona would do 8-inch, and they do an occasional 16. Mm. And with that, you have to dig into the ground, put the mortar in the ground, and wire it up that way. After 9-11, it became a matter of, oh, we don't want this being transported on our roads. We have a size limit and a requirement for, like, viewing distance and everything. So pre-9-11, it was every inch the size of the firework. It has to be cleared 100 feet in the air and a 50-foot radius from your shooting area. So you're able to, like, sit closer and be within a closer range. After 9-11, it is about 150 feet in the air per inch 
and a hundred foot radius viewing distance. So if I were to shoot like a three inch shell, I have to have like a 450 clearance in the air. So I'm probably calling air traffic and telling them, hey, in this general area, we're about to start a show for this duration. Please redirect traffic. And then also we have to make work with the police force and fire force to make sure that the viewing areas are sanctioned correctly so no one gets within the range which is really fun because um before shooting and after shooting people mistake us for firefighters 87 percent of the time due to what we have to wear so our getup is essentially a brush jacket or structural depending on your job while the fireworks are going off and we get this directly from firefighters so i get the confusion but it's they're like Oh, okay, so is there going to be a fire or anything? Or like, go talk to the firefighters. They're over there eating hot dogs with you guys. We're over here playing <laughs> with the explosives. <laughs> so it's it's a weird thing being a pyrotechnician or part of a fire crew, like fireworks crew or a firework tech, because you are elevated and not elevated to a point of keeping the peace and protection. Because back when I was a child and introduced into this shit because I was used as child labor for this when I was seven Ooh. and I was building the racks for f yeah fireworks really doesn't fireworks of America doesn't care how old you are as long as you can hold a hammer <laughs> it, it's fun but they do have the law that you have to be 18 in order to help set the fireworks into the mortars so they are good on that mm. but um, yeah, it's really weird when you're seven years old and you're given like a whistle and you, ha you are the boundary person between like the public and explosives. Uh. And even the police have to come up to you and be like, Hey, can we come up and check? And I'm like, I gotta have to clear that with like three different people before I let you in, Mr. Officer. <laughs> like in this situation, seven year old me had like, like I didn't have the amount of power to like restrain, detain or arrest anybody, but I had the power to say, get the fuck out of here. As long as people listened. Oh, if they don't listen, depending on how close they get to the fireworks, we do have authorization to restrain. So it's depending on where in the area you are. So like with fireworks... It is, if you are just entering the taped area or the restricted area or firing zone, if if the fireworks are out 20, like it's about a 25%. If you walk in, we can be like, we can approach you, tell you to turn around and tell you the reason. If you continue, once you get past like the 50% and you are actively continuing to approach the explosives, we have the right to detain you and send you back or until a police or fire officer can come and deal with you correctly. So it's, you're elevated, but you're still a, sh you're still a civilian. Mm. It's, it's a weird situation. And fireworks is weird because all of our rules are in a situation of habit, of, well, of mistakes. If a mistake is made, we learn, and it's usually someone got hurt. And we had to create a rule to fix it, which sucks, but that's how it is. Best example I have for this is the first time I ever was allowed to like load fireworks and shoot a show is I was at a block party on the roof in San Diego and we were only doing theatrical shows, which is anything inch and a half and less, which is your Roman candles, sparklers, and maybe a cake. And in fireworks terms, a cake is just like 50 roaming candles rubber banded together with wire banding and they're all strung together. So they fire off in sequence. And I was firing this show. And as the show was going on, my pyrotechnician, which he is retired now. So I'll be willing to drop his name. My pyrotechnician, Doug Wilbur told me, do not stop firing. This is my first show. This is my first time playing with the explosives. I'm 18. I want to, make a good impression so i do not stop firing the way they had all the fireworks set up was on um plywood and apparently and they now we know an inch and a half firework is enough force to break plywood in half even if it's two inches thick so the board broke and it shot a roman candle at my pyrotechnician while he was working on some wiring for the finale and five 
like five Roman candles and a um, peony went into the crowd and it just dispersed the crowd and ruined everybody's night that day because I think two people went to the hospital for second degree burns and one went because it actually um, got right at their neck. Oh. Yeah, so not fun when that's your first fireworks show and you have civilian injuries and you shot your own pyrotechnician due to the words that he said of this show does not stop till i tell you yeah (laughs) did you get in trouble at all or did he take the hit for it since he told you he takes the hit since it's his license but he also has to make the full report and work with the fire chief to make a city report and a local report of why it happened and why it will never happen again Mm. which is why i never want to be a pyrotechnician i'm happy transporting all the explosives helping set up getting dressed and helping the shows go up in the air but i do not want to be responsible for all the fuck-ups and figuring out why that shit goes wrong Mm -hmm. so that's another shitty story um that was my first show so i can say my indoctrination into fireworks is I shot my power technician and caused injuries. And I just turned 18 at that time, too. 18, allowed to play with explosives and already causing fuck-ups. That must have been very discouraging. Oh, absolutely, especially when you don't make money from this shit. Right after that, we went and got sandwiches, and they're like, how the hell did this fuck up? We're just eating at Denny's, and we're just like, how in the world did this little 1.5-inch peony fuck up this plywood? There's that, and then there's other shows where... It's not as big as a problem, but it is surprisingly common that you're probably going to set fire to shit because I've set fire to a church, Black Rock Church in Alpine, San Diego. I did the 4th of July show for that, and it uses a lot of theatricals and fountains and stuff like that. And since I'm the little person, they sent me up into the attic and I had to stay up there to make sure that nothing caught on fire and making sure everything gets wired. And I'm just up there with a tiny ass, like emergency car fire extinguisher to put out anything. If anything goes wrong. Well, one of our fountains, was angled incorrectly and it just shot it on all the plywood of their attic so lit that on fire and it lit some of our wiring on fire so half of that show didn't go off i guess it's better than it shorting it huh depends on the show it depends when in the show and where because sometimes embers going into another gun is worse than an actual short or an electrical failure For example, fireworks shows are really well spaced out just so because you're shooting paper and black powder and essentially rice into the sky and the embers are coming back down and hitting you and those are still on fire. It's spaced out and a lot of our stuff is fire resistant or fire retardant, so we don't have to worry about that. The situations where we have to worry about that is usually the finale. Because that is tightly packed, and that's usually your the end of the show where everybody wants a big explosive. Or wants loud explosives. So, this was another fuck-up. You won't see it in the news, but it happened. This was in Not Good With Places, I want to say Salt Lake, California? Middle of nowhere, desert, hot as hell. It was a 300-gun show, and 150 was just the finale. And... Power technician for that wanted to chain it because it was nothing but iron salutes. And for people that don't know, in fireworks, iron salutes are the ones that sound like a gunshot or a mortar going off. They're the loud ones that everybody like. If you go out to a theatrical and a fireworks show has a 21-gun salute, it is a iron salute. It is the loudest firework you can get, per se. Because I'm saying words like peony, um, flower, smiley face, other stuff like that red, white colors, stuff like that. These are the other fireworks, and these aren't as loud. These are your colors in the sky. The iron salutes are the the loudest type of firework you can really get. So for this show, it is 150 guns for the prime show, and it's just colors, shapes, fountains, Mickey Mouse. And then for the end, it is 150 guns of nothing but iron salutes. 
so it is meant to be loud. Well, while we're shooting the main show, a large ember lands in the middle of our 150 gun finale, and it sets off half of it. We don't like when that happens. We like to try and keep stuff controlled as much as possible, but fireworks have a sense of chaos and unpredictability to it, which is not fun either, especially when you're the fucker that has to stand next to it when it's exploding. I was thinking like setting off a bunch of them that weren't supposed to go off yet. What would the term be for that? There's not really a term. It's just a loose ember or a loose star triggered a chain. We have have shorts and we have electrical failures which is that usually happens at your pin board or somewhere within the wire but for situations where it is where the firework either broke low and it set off the rest of the stuff in the sequence or stuff like that you don't really have a word for it it's just shit <laughs> and when you said broke low i'm guessing that means it finished its fuse too fast okay so firework technicians have a few phrases it's there's muzzle break, low break, and fuck up. Low break is it didn't have enough powder to send it up as high as it should. Muzzle break is it went just above the cannon, and that is the one that is probably going to try and kill you. Because the explosion is happening right here about chest level. Oh, so it detonates at chest level. Yeah, so low break, it goes about like 50 feet in the air. You have active fire coming back at you muzzle break is you see it go up and you see it just hang in the air and all you can say is fuck and hit the ground because the explosion is happening right here in front of you and then there's oh fuck where it never came out of the gun and it just ruins half of the show how common is that surprisingly you're bound to see it every other show and it's usually the finale wow you're going to see it constantly, and this is why it's a, you're not really in this profession for the money. You're in it to see shit explode. Best example I can say for that is San Bernardino. For the last five years, I've done the 4th of July in San Bernardino County. And the reason why for the last five years I've been doing San Bernardino County is because the previous pyrotechnician ignored the safety concerns of the fire chief. And it caused five people's deaths. Oh my god. So what happened was they had a rack of four inch shells and one of the three inch near it blew up in the gun. And it tipped over the four inch shells. It didn't tip over away or into anything. It tipped so it was facing into the crowd. Oh no. Yeah. So no one was able to get to it in time to correct it. They shot four fireworks through the park house and into the crowd. And it just exploded in the crowd. So um, San Bernardino County now has the rule that if you're doing fireworks shows, you have to put sandbags on your fireworks racks in order to keep it facing up. It's just so wild to me that the way that new regulations happen is someone died. Like, this seems like it'd be so much more preemptively regulated, you know? That's the thing. We work really close, hand-in-hand, -hand with Fire Chief and San Diego Fire Rescue. We work hand-in-hand -hand with them in connection with them a lot. So, usually we get to know each other. This pyrotechnician who put his license down was a new one, and he thought he was hot shit. And the fire chief is going out, inspecting the guns, making sure they're all good. And he was like, hey, these are kind of wobbly would you mind if my crew goes get some sandbags and we put them on a few? And I was like, no, it'll be fine. We already did the necessary footing for it. it it'll be fine. I've never had a gun tip over. And the fire chief's like, all right, fine. Say what you want. And sadly, it happens. So for Fireworks of America, every single power technician has their own individual sets of rules, regulations, and safety because something went wrong. You will also have your specialized pyrotechnicians, and these are the ones that work at like Legoland, Disneyland, or they do a certain type of show style. And these are the ones that kind of throw safety out the wind to get you your beautiful theatrics. So best example I can say for like one where rules kind of go out the window in, in order to make it look pretty is the pop show in Pops and Blessing of the Lobster Boat in San Diego. With Pops, what we do 
is really fucked up and technically not allowed because it's technically dynamite fishing. <laughs> but what, depending on like when in the Pops Amphitheater summer show, we will do a low break. We will purposefully have a low break, but we do it in a way where it's safe and it looks beautiful. So what we do is at lunch, we're, e we're eating chips and we'll keep the bag. We'll put the firework in the bag, tape it off, give it a long ass line of electrical cord, and we'll just throw it off of the barge. We'll make sure that our chase boat knows to look for it because we'll usually put reflective tape to signify it so our chase boat can patrol around and keep people away but we'll do that shit half the time and it's we just throw that shit over let it float out and then when it's time the firework has nowhere to go because it just is doesn't have any like form or cone to force it to go up so it explodes right on the water level and it creates this beautiful f like fountain of flour and it just looks like a like hard to explain but it just parts the water creates a beautiful like ha half sphere effect on the water where the whole firework is contained and it's and you see like the whole color and shape in there and it's beautiful to see but holy fuck is it sketchy to do while you're while you're on a boat like 12 feet away from it oh my god do you think that there should be more regulation on this stuff it's hard to say because the current regulation and the current practices to get into being a pyrotechnician are already really stringent as is and there are also depending on where you're trying to go if you're trying to be a pyrotechnician for disneyland you're gonna learn different practices and different safety concerns than someone that's doing your standard fourth of july or someone that's doing your stage effects. It's hard to say as I would love to see a huge safety concern, but the safety concern's already there. It's just more of these wild outlandish things happen and we have to course correct. The safety's there, but it's, you're not gonna use the same safety practices for a theatrical show as you would for a like 4th of July or a stage effects. So it's once you kind of get into a certain thing, you learn your own safety laws and you learn your own safety practices to make sure everything goes correctly. After that, it's once something fucks up, you just have to course correct. So as a firework technician, the thing that we call cakes or stuff like that, if you're in like the deep south or you're within a state that can um, buy fireworks, this is a rule that Fireworks of America has that I would love to see it be implemented because this caused some harm. If you're in a state, per se, that can buy fireworks, a cake is a just candles. Roman candles or small fireworks that are put together in a box shape. And you just light it and you can run away. Commercial, you can buy them in like 9 or 12 packs and it's usually like a Roman candle or a small firework. Well, the practice that we have to do because something fucking happened is we have to get baling wire and wrap those like two or three times and then twist it so it's secured because we've had those fall apart and shoot Roman candles all over the place. I love going to like backstreet like firework displays where like someone just has like $3,000 worth of fireworks in their basement and they just light it up in the street. I love doing that, but it terrifies the shit out of me due to like all of the safety concerns I have due to experiences and stories. I will enjoy the show, but I will stay far the fuck away. But I'll also be the first one when shit goes wrong to be down there with a fire extinguisher. It seems like having someone like you at some scuffed like 2 a.m. fireworks show is definitely a good thing. Well, this is why I say if you're going to do a scuffed fireworks show, please work in contact with at least one firefighter or someone because they have the gear to go in and not give a fuck. Our PPE or personal protective equipment all comes from auctioned off or retired firefighter equipment, which we have their brush jackets and we have their structural jackets. So we have the firefighter hard helmet. We have their structural pants and structural jackets. So we will charge in knowing that we will not get burned, but we will probably still have a hole blasted through us if shit goes wrong. If you're going to do 
that please do that or secure your fucking fireworks get a giant ass two by four and screw and secure your fireworks into place because the amount of times where i go oh, or hear a story about like some sketchy backyard fireworks show and something just tips or someone gets too close and bumps into a firework display and it shoots into the audience is astronomical and it just it should never really happen if you're truly screwing your shit down and making sure everything is safe and it's hard because this kind of leads back into like the safety practices of like the different pyrotechnicians it's you gain experience and you learn what you need to do so it's it's hard to really say anything that's why having an experienced mentor is very important then so fireworks of america they hire off of a mentorship program anyone can join so if you're in the west coast fireworks of america search them up you can join it's free they'll give you the list of pyrotechnicians in your area they'll give you their number and email you can just call up and like hey i would like to work for you and shit like that and when you do that you have to work under like so many different pyrotechnicians and get a letter of recognition that you are going to do this and then you have to go through a test and program show that that you know and recognize the laws and restrictions and all this for your state and local provisional codes so it's there is a mentorship program within the fireworks community it's just sometimes the mentorship ain't all there like i always say disneyland and them because their fireworks are extremely different. Their fireworks go off of air cannons, which is, I wish everybody had the capability to do that because that's the safest thing you can do. But I realize that not everybody has a million dollars to drop in just their fireworks displays. Ooh, um, this goes back to the, um, we turned night into day by firing off all of the fireworks at once. This is the um, pyro magic. That's the system that we use, and it is really cool because even us as pyrotechnicians, we can just be sitting there and drinking a beer as the show shoots itself. Pyro magic is a computer-based system that we hook up to the fireworks, and it connects to whoever the fuck we want to connect it to, or it remotely displays with a music cue. This is more of your really big shows and any of your football games they probably use pyro magic to fire off a certain series of fireworks and it's really cool my favorite thing that you can do with it is do multiple firework displays at once qualcomm used to have the sky show and that was my favorite because it took so much engineering in order to angle the guns and everything to get the correct size and everything but what would happen is we would have four guns that were angled to intersect each other and blow up as they contacted and then we had two that would shoot down at us and we had a light of black powder like luminescent strip once the show started that was the first thing you saw and it would create this display of a star being forced towards you and then just blow up it's the most dangerous thing you could fucking do, but it was the coolest thing you could see from the audience. Damn. Yeah, stuff like that, there's no way you can do it with, like, your regular pin board or, like, your road flare. Because half of the shows we hand light, and we're just there with, like, a torch. Oh, my a God. A or a road flare. <laughs> just standing there and, like, fucking light. <laughs> we're just trying to make sure it goes off and doesn't kill us in the same term yeah this is a free industry you really can just google up what your local fireworks industry is and just join them just be like hey i'm interested i want to see shit explode just don't expect any money you're really just working for a meal it's one of those industries you have to like it to stay in it you'll do it one time and you'll either hate it or you'll do it one time and you love it it is the most enjoyable disappointment of your life because <laughs> You are doing 12 to 72 hours of labor just to watch the sky for 10 minutes. There are five different people that primarily talk to each other in order to figure out what goes to make the show. You have your sketchy ass backyard engineer that tells you where to lay it for safety. And then you have your pyrotechnician that is contracted for the job, which is like, okay, how am I going to transport? They're in charge of transportation and all that. 
and then you have usually your plant which is in contact with japan because america ever since 9 11 the only fireworks we make here are your commercial we don't make the industrial fireworks in the states anymore we import all of our fireworks because the way we were making fireworks was way more explosive and way more deadly and way more combustible than the way that japan does it so you're saying we were doing it the american way absolutely 100 <laughs> percent. bigger boom bigger color bigger boom the old american fireworks are basically 98 percent black powder and then the rest of it is your stars which is what gives it color the japanese way is renewable you can search it on youtube there is a great documentary that does it justice better than me but they still use black powder for the explosive part but the ignition is rice it's a rice byproduct so it is able to deal with moisture better than what we would have done because pre 9 11 you would hear stories of guns exploding exponentially more because if the black powder underneath the actual firework so best way i can explain imagine an ice cream cone you get at cvs you know the circle up here and then the pointy cone at the bottom yeah so the pointy cone at the bottom is where you keep all of your black powder and that is the lift charge and then the circle up here is the actual firework that is what goes up and explodes in the air well the tail or the black match that goes in and lights it has to go through the lift charge in order to send it into the sky so that's why when you see fireworks you can generally see it and track it you can see from where it goes off the horizon into the sky that orange glint that you're following is the um, black match that is burning off into the sky and it explodes well the old american ones if you were in a high moist high um humidity or say the pier that turned night into day and shit got wet that lift charge would get moist and would not ignite most of the time but the firework inside is still dry so the charge would go through the lift charge into the firework and still detonate but it would detonate at ground level and that would cause a lot of damage i'm guessing oh absolutely you can contain maybe three or four ground explosions and continue shooting the show but after that you have to really kind of like take a break analyze what's broken and see whether you have to pack shit up and call it a day or continue fireworks is fun get into it free promo <laughs> child labor end up like me seven year old hitting a hammer and nailing shit and telling cops to fuck off well if you've been doing it for as long as you have then clearly there's some good in it i like seeing shit explode in the sky it's fun <laughs> <laughs> fun thing is if you are at your local firework place if you stick around for 15 minutes, this is a great way to get into the industry. If you stick around for 15 minutes and you start walking towards them and you ask for someone, ask to help to tear down. That is a great way to get into the industry, get into it, get names, stay in contact with people, and it helps everyone get home faster. Because, mm. yeah, it's if it's not in a place like where you have to get access onto a building or you, they have to unlock stuff. If this is just in a normal park, see if anyone's around and ask if you can help to tear down. This will make everybody happy because no one wants to stay there until 5 a.m. tearing down racks and making sure everything is safe and clear. It's really a family-knit community 98% of the time. You'll be there. They'll feed you. You'll end up somewhere that you don't know meet new people meet friends about 50 to 75 percent of the industry is retired military oh who would have thought they would want to keep playing with explosives you're just going to meet a lot of interesting people you're going to do a lot of interesting things and it's a really cool industry to get into and it's a try it once you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I did a show up in LA and it was a block party and like we were tearing down and some and, like some guy just came up. It was like they saw that we haven't moved out and that the fire chief police were still there and they're like, hey, is something wrong? Do you guys need help? And we're like, can you hold a hammer? Yeah. All right. Let's go. Do you know how to use a hammer and not hurt yourself? Yeah, let's go. We'll pick you up. We'll bring you in. Every 4th of July show needs hands. 
so they will always welcome the aid as much as they can right well there's your advice yeah <laughs> thank you so much for talking about this that is a lot more of a chaotic job than i thought but it sounds very interesting absolutely tell me a story Tell me a story, I want to hear it You might think it's boring, but I'm interested